In this video, we're going to continue our basic electrical conversation by talking about series and parallel circuits. If you have not watched videos 1, which is lesson 1, and lesson 2 before you get to this, please go back and do so. This will actually make more sense. These are videos are a series and only work if you watch them one at a time. So, so far we've looked at circuits that have like one path for electricity to go, as well as a single switching device. Most of the circuits you work with in HVAC will be a little bit more complex. Therefore, we must understand the two ways circuits are designed. The first circuit we're going to talk about is a series circuit. Series circuits exist when the flow of electrons, which is current, must pass through a series of components. Switches that control loads are wired in series with these loads. Here's an example of this. Okay, we have two loads, B1 and B2. Let's call them light bulb 1, light bulb 2. We have two switches, S1 and switch 2, okay, down near the bottom. We also have a service switch up here, but the service switch is more for protection than anything else, okay? So the ones we're really worried about is switch 1 and switch 2. When you look at this circuit, once I close L and switch 1, and switch two, there's only one path for electricity to flow. There's no options. The current has to flow through the full circuit for me to be able to get B1 and B2 to light up. So again, that is everything in series. Now, switch one is in series with switch two, which is in series with B1 and B2. If any one of these components is this circuit is open or fails, the remainder of the circuit will not work. Loads in series split the source voltage based on their resistance. Neither B1 or B2 will be getting full source voltage. Couple basic rules. The amperage is the same throughout the entire circuit. Again, you only have one path for electricity to flow, so the amperage is going to be the same. The total resistance of the circuit is the sum of all the individual components' resistance. So you take a resistance of B1, take a resistance of B2, you add them together, that's your total circuit resistance. Okay. In the HVAC industry, it's rare to see loads in series. You don't see it that often. I can think of about four occasions where I've seen loads in series. It's very frequent to see switches in series. For example, safety switches are always put in series because you want all the safety switches to be closed for the circuit to work. Okay, it's frequent in our earlier example, both switches must be closed to provide a path for electricity. I use that example because that's a common scenario. We have safety switches, they all must be closed for the circuit to work. In a series circuit, any open, any switch not closed, any break in the wiring will cause the circuit not to work. Think about the older Christmas tree lights. If one bulb burns out, you gotta find that bulb because the entire string doesn't work. So when you're troubleshooting a series circuit, start by making sure all the switches that you can close are closed. And the reason I say that you can close is because a lot of times switches are part of devices and you might not be able to see if they're open or closed just by looking at them. You gotta use your meter. Now check voltage across the source. That's the number one spot. Check voltage across the source. Then go across every switch. Okay, note that I'm leaving one meter lead right on line. Because from our last lesson on meters, we know that voltage across a closed switch is zero. Voltage across an open switch is source. So we're going to go across and we're going to just continue hopscotching through the circuit. Okay. Now, remember what I said. Voltages in a series circuit, the loads are not getting full source voltage. Okay, so in this case, the voltage across B1 is only 60 volts. Well, the voltage across B2 will also be... 60 volts, but they add together to come up 100. Did you see that? I have 60 volts there, okay, from L to between the two loads, and then I go to 100 after the second load. So the voltage across both loads together equals source. Again, 
That's very important to remember. Okay. When troubleshooting a series circuit, if you get source voltage across any switching device, that switch is open. When troubleshooting a series circuit, if you get source voltage across a load and that load is not operating, the load is bad. Okay, so if we go back here, and if I get source voltage across B1, but B1 is not operational, it tells me there's an open in B1, and that load is bad. Parallel circuits are the most common circuit in the HVAC industry for loads. In other words, things that do work are normally parallel circuit. These are the circuits that do the work. All loads in parallel receive full source voltage. This is a big difference and this is why they are used. Loads in parallel receive full source voltage and I'll show you that in a second. Parallel circuits exist when a circuit has more than one load but none of the loads receive voltage from another load. In other words, multiple paths for power to flow. If one load burns out or goes bad, the remaining loads will continue to operate. Think about your house wiring. If I have a light bulb go out in the kitchen, I want the bedroom still to be able to get light. All loads get full source voltage. The total amperage of the circuit is the sum of all the amperages of the loads. In other words, amperages add. So in this case, I have switch one that's actually controlling two loads in parallel. The reason they're in parallel is if switch one is closed, Bulb 1 is getting full source voltage, and bulb 2 is also getting full source voltage. The, volt, the current does not need to go through the other load. They're next to each other. That's in parallel. Here, I have two loads in parallel, each controlled by switch. Again, switch 1 closes, bulb 1 is getting full source voltage. Switch 2 closes, bulb 2 is getting full source voltage. They're independent of each other. If bulb 1 burns out, bulb 2 is still going to work. The same basic procedures exist as to troubleshooting. Start at the source. First, make sure all switches you can control are closed. Check across source, L1 to L2, 240 volts. Then, Continue going down to the start of the branch. When we're talking branches, we're talking anything that connects the L1 bar to the L2 bar. Okay, and you're going to continue working through. You want to have zero volts across any switch, but 240 volts across the working load, because that's our source voltage, 240 volts. Okay. Then we continue to go. Anything on the L1 side of the load should measure out to zero volts because the switches are closed. Now let's say I got zero volts here and instead of zero, I got 240 here. What would you say about that switch? Okay, it tells me this switch is bad or is open because voltage across an open switch is always source. Let me erase that, what I just did. Okay, but again, in this case, I get zero volts, so it tells me that switch is closed. Zero volt at the bulb. Now, is this bulb good or bad? Well, from the PowerPoint diagram, I can't tell you. But if the load is operational, in other words, if whatever B2 is working and I have 240 volts, the bulb is good. And it's a good reason. If I have 240 volts at this point and the B2 is not doing what it's supposed to do, let's just say it's a light bulb, the light bulb isn't on, it tells me we have a bad light bulb. And I'm going to continue. When troubleshooting a parallel circuit, if you get the source voltage across any switching device, that switch is open. When troubleshooting a parallel circuit, if you get source voltage across a load and the load is not operating, the load is bad. Don't overanalyze it. Okay, if you get 240 volts across or source voltage across a load and the load is not operating, the load is bad. Start at the source and work your way from there. 
Use the hopscotch method. Put one of your meter leads at source, leave it there. You get any voltage across a switch, it's open. Or sometimes bad. If you get voltage across a load and the load is not working, it has failed. Replace it. Okay, if you're in a shop environment, you're going to build and check a series circuit using your meter. Then you're going to build and check a parallel circuit using your meter. If you're doing this on your own, I'll put some suggestions out either on my website or in the YouTube con comments. Make sure you get appropriate sign-offs from any instructor you have and each person participates in the project if you're working as a group. The only way you're going to learn this stuff is to actually do it.